this response. It's very exciting. I think it's important you said that because you yourself, uh, you were a pound for pound fighter and then you had that little slate where things weren't going your way. It seems like you turned it around. How did you turn it around and how did you keep through that? And what did it take to turn it around and back to your old self or halfway to your old self? Well, it's a self-realization, right? If you don't get out of yourself, you don't really realize who you truly are. You know, you're just gonna keep stumbling. We see a lot of world champions fall even deeper. You know, something that I'm blessed with is I was with the right people, and then and this tournament that I was in made me allowed me to see where where my talent was, and then allowed me to be motivated. And then that aspect, I started to learn again all over. You know, everybody knew my style. Now I got to create a different style. I did, and now I'm here. How did you do that? Because I remember when you were 126 feet on Walter. It was obviously way too big for you. She's like, I got to go to 122, which was hard for you to make then. But now you're holding back to 118. Uh, 35 now? 30, 30, 37. 30 goals. Yeah. So, I mean, how is, it's hard, you know, when you're that age to, to drop those extra pounds. How did you go all the way back? What are you calling old, man? Oh, okay. <laughs> when you're that age, put it that way, not old. But you know what I mean? It's not like when you're 27, you're making that. Well, you know, I think that, again, it's motivation. I've always been a smaller guy. That's why I didn't even have a problem making the weight because, you know, when I put some of my mind into it, it just happens. You know, again, not a problem with the weight at all. But the motivation came in because I was in, I was in something that, that I wanted to be in. You know, the excitement was there, the motivation was there, fighting the best fighter out there. This is where I wanted to be. So, what do you yeah. think now with the Neuer, the monster? Everybody's acting like this guy, like it's going to knock your head off, basically, right? I mean, you, you, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't understand that. Or in, in the words of, of, in the words of the legendary Roy Jones. Yeah, must have forgot. Yeah, they love hook. Yeah, they love hook. You know, when Roy was, was, was saying and singing that song, y'all must have forgot because they forgot that I'm the kind, of, I'm that guy. I'm that guy that just takes everybody out with one punch. Yesterday I talked to Luis Neri, La Pantarita, and he said a lot of people are sleeping on him. He said he wouldn't be surprised at all if he win that fight. Like I said, everyone's like underdog, and he said that he thinks that's actually motivated. It is, you know, and, that, and you see that the, the, the more that I'm this division, the more that I start to see myself and, and I start to recover my ability, you know, speed, the power is coming back all over again. And, and that's something that, that people just, they have a one side, you know, they think that this is how it's supposed to be. There's an expectation, but sometimes the expectation doesn't truly come, you know, or, or it doesn't really happen. You know, I have my own ways of looking at things. I've, I've, I've been in this game and the reason why he is the way he is because people fear. Could you well, you get a guy who doesn't fear anything. Can you give us an update on when and where? We're hearing the fall, but what can you say? You know, that's something that, my, uh, that's why I'm here with my promoter, because we were discussing uh, the, the whole situation. We don't see know what's going on. I love, the, I love the tournament, I love the concept, but one way or another, this is how I live, this is how I do things, and I want to fight. You know, that's all I want to do is fight. And, and the thing about what happened, what's happening now, is, and from what my promoter and I is, is looking at, we don't know him. We've reached out to them numerous times. We haven't reached out, you know, we haven't, we haven't had any top eight where it's going to be, when it's going to be. I need to fight. I want to fight. And, and that's how it's going to be. And whatever my, my, my promoter has, will decide to do, I'm going to follow him. I've always followed him. And that's how I will always be. You know, I've always been a loyal kind of guy. And, I love this concept. But is it going to happen? I guess that's what I'm saying. That's that's exactly yeah. what it is, you know. But in the meantime, if, if I don't hear anything, you know, we, my yeah, promoter and I we're going to move on. Was it that you heard something? They kind of posted on you, or well, my promoter had talked to them and they said they'd get back to them, but they haven't. Um, the last time that we heard from them was in uh, my, my wife's birthday, July, uh, June twenty-first. You know. I know, I got it right, baby. I got it right this time, okay? I didn't say I didn't say the wrong I didn't say the wrong uh, birthday, okay? <laughs> no need to. Uh, uh, so that's that's pretty much it. You know, we haven't heard anything. And again, I love the opportunity that they've given me, fighting the best out there, making the world champion all over again. And, and I want to fight. That's, that's all it is. Just communicate and, and know exactly when I'll fight, and then and you know, and we'll be. No need to. They're, they're putting the new year. Just look at it this way. The, the tournament is supposed to be done in June or July. We're in July. You know, that's what that's what it was supposed to be done. And, and I don't mind fighting for this tournament. But <laughs> they owe you money as well? No, they, oh, they no. Left, they, we've always done it the right way. We've always done it the right way. We've always reached out to them and followed the protocol to get the money. We never had a problem. 
you know. Um, but the only thing is, is again, the tournament is supposed to be done by the end of July. Um, and we're ending with you know. And I was saying that, you know, I'm so down to fight for September, but I don't think at this moment in time, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. But I want to do, I, I want to fight. If you want to push it out that way, I'll fight. Just give me some fun. Could bring it to another network? Have you spoken to a No Ways people? Maybe you bring it to another network? Like, like, uh, well, that's, a, that's what my, my, uh, my promoter has been doing with them, just reaching out to them and, and just, just make the fight happen. You know, whatever, whatever decision that we're going to make from here on, it's just we want communication because we do want to fight. We do want to make things happen. But if that doesn't work, then we're, we're, we're willing to move on and, and make it happen. Still so uh, they're, they're, they're putting the new yay up there with Crawford and Canelo as top five pound for pound. Is that what you see when you watch him? He is that good? or? I mean, he's good. Mm -hmm. Power, power wise, how you doing, man? How you doing? You're gonna have to cut. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, Freddy. Good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, so, you know, um, he's a good fighter. Uh, you know, but I can see that, you know, he, he, the way he fought was just like a, a younger me. You know, and he said it himself, and he looked up to me going up, as he was growing up. A lot of his tendencies is, is the way I do it. You know, and he's a great fighter, that's, that's pretty much it. But when I look at it, there's the thing is, when, when it comes down to a fighter, it's not a fighter you ask, like, is he better than you? Is he good? It's not. But <laughs> how do you think he's going to react to fighting someone who can match him in power? That's something that no one has seen. He hasn't seen it in himself. You know, when, when he's in there with somebody, everybody's afraid of him. So no one, he's not he's able to do what he has to do. But you see a guy like me, who's not afraid to get hit, who's not afraid to punch, to punch, to punch. You know, it becomes this, who's the biggest hooker of them all. <laughs> so that's what you think it's going to come <laughs> yeah. down to, your hey, left hook? It comes down to, you know, if, if, if he wants to hook, I'll hook him. Better knockouts, Virginia or Montiel? Both of them have their own tennis, their own uh, greatness. You know? Do you also, you know, talking about how he's going to react to taste and power, do you think there's going to be something there when you're able to take, if you're able to take his best punch, you know, do you think that's something that new for him to experience too that could help you in this fight? He's never had a guy take his best shot. You know, he, he, that's something that, that we all have to answer when the moment that we get inside the ring, you know. Um, but it's uh, something that we just kind of guess because he hasn't, we haven't seen it. You know, all I know is that I'm not the guy to back, to back up. I'm not the guy to, to play possum with. You know, I'm, I'm a very dangerous guy. Yeah, he's a very dangerous guy, but I've been with guys bigger than him. Been with guys, uh, uh, you know, strong as well. But I give him the biggest respect. I think he's a, he's a tremendous fighter. Hey, Jules, like, look at his resume. What do you think is looking at his resume? What is your resume? Your resume is a great resume. It's a solid. It's okay. I don't think it's great, but me, you know, he's still young. He's he's fought guys that I mean, you look at my resume, I fought in World Camp, and I fought 11, 12 World Champions in the world. You know. Um, he hasn't done that yet. And and don't you know, don't get me wrong, he, everybody's different and they go in there differently. You know, it's like somebody who, who fights in, in, in the in the gym and they're tremendous, but when they get into the fight it's, it, they don't show up. You know, it's, it's just like that. So I don't look at resume in that way. All I know is I'm what I'm capable of. And, and, and what he's capable of, and, and it's exciting. Are you staying at 18 after the tournament? You know, I, I'm a very small guy when it comes down to it. I've never had a problem with 118. You know, I can I can play. I can play 126 to 115. Like, like 115? Wow. I, I can play. That's all. Fly. Yeah, that's it. Super fly, baby. <laughs> Mr. I have a question over here. Yes, sir. So you're on the Fight Night Champion. <laughs> uh, what did you think about your rating on there? What do you think about right now having a game of all three? You know, I'm just, I'm just blessed, man. I'm blessed when it comes down to it. Now my rating, I think, with the experience, I think my rating's gonna go up. <laughs> Very nice. Great segue. What do you guys want to know? <laughs> when, when's the fight, Richard? That's right. Donaire and Anouye. Nonito. Well, that's the question. You know, I'm sure you ask uh, Nonito about it, and uh, he has been patiently waiting. Uh, I just met with Donito. We had lunch, and uh, over the past few weeks, we both uh, reached out to the organizers, and we are we are waiting on the date, but uh, that date doesn't seem to be. And I can understand uh, that at this point uh, there is not much more of a choice to pull out and pursue different opportunities because uh, at this point in his career I can fully understand that Nonito cannot afford to just sit around and do nothing. The tournament was supposed to be done.
on uh, June, July. Uh, Nonito has always been a very big supporter of the tournament, and continues to be a big supporter of the tournament. But, um, you know, the lack of uh, information, the lack of communication is frankly um, surprising. And, uh, and Nonito needs to fight for it. And he made it clear to the organizers. Uh, I tried to uh, make it clear as well, and so hopefully, um, hopefully we get something. Would you want to grab that fight and move it to LA? It's a perfect fight for LA. It would be a fantastic fight for LA. Mm -hmm. I love to have a fight in LA. But again, uh, I, I, uh, I two months ago I was asked uh, to see what dates are available. I communicated those dates, having her since. So uh, I just don't, I wish I could tell you what's going on. Uh, I'm even uh, involved, I'm an advisor in the World Health Institute of Security. So uh, I like those guys, I support those guys. I think it's a fantastic tournament. It's, it's great for the sport. Uh, look, we has elevated the cruiserweight division in season one. So it's an absolutely fantastic uh, tournament. And I just hope that there would be more communication and uh, not letting the fighters sit around, you know, because uh, we went through the same last year. December with the semi-finals when the fighters were waiting and waiting and waiting and it took forever to get them communicated. Uh, so I think from an organizational point of view, things need to get better uh, because if they don't, I just don't see this uh, these, these tournament to be, to be to frankly be able to last because fighters want to fight. Fighters don't want to sit around. Is there a deadline where if it has to stay, you got to pull out? Deadline has long passed, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, let's be honest, it's fought in April and now we're in July, so we have no idea when. So, I mean, you can agree. Really, and I don't, I'm not a believer in deadlines, I'm a believer that once you make a decision, you go forward and you never go back. And you don't have to go and, like, oh, you have another week, or you know, this is like bullshit, these deadlines. You know? <laughs> these are self imposed deadlines. You try to communicate. You try to find a solution, you try to find an agreement, and if you can, you move on and you never look back, okay? And, you know, I talked to Monito Donir today, and we are getting close to that point where you uh, move on and never look back. And Richard, uh, you know, Fox has always made money on, on ethnic rivalries, Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Do you think there's real economic upside to, to, to a Filipino-Japanese kind of rivalry being, you know, in L.A. or in the Pacific Rim? No, I think with, um, you know, with Nonito, you have 118 pounds, the best fighter in the world. Uh, and, you know, everybody says, like, he knew the monster, the monster. Yeah, but you know what? At the end of the day, he's not really, I mean, if you guys believe in monsters, then good for you, but he's not really a monster, let's face it. He's a great fighter. He's a hot fighter with the really a monster. And if there is a monster, you know, he's as much of a monster than the other monster. So, Could it be uh, two monsters? Be monster <laughs> against monster. Ah, uh, the monster's Monsters, <laughs> monsters <laughs> night. Uh, and monsters night, if that fight really happens, you know, but, so, I mean, experience, experience, you know, you want to look at this fight here with Pacquiao and Perlman, you start seeing a lot of parallels between Domingo and Inui, experience, and experience matters in the field. And you see how Domingo look, Inui, who has fought, look who he has fought, look who he has fought, he has never given a vote, the club, and the vote to somebody like Domingo, and when after he knew his last fight, Monito called me and he was laughing. He said, really laughing before I said, oh, man, I saw this fight and I know exactly what to do. I know exactly what his weaknesses are and how to expose it. So, of course, we're not going to tell you what the weaknesses are, but uh, that's what happened, right?